Okay, can I have everybody's attention, please? Um, so, my name is David Rubenstein. I have the honor of serving as the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Kennedy Center. And on behalf of the trustees, welcome to the dedication of our new building, The Reach. Thank you very much. The Kennedy Center is roughly 50 years old. And when it was dedicated in 1971, it was designed to be a cultural center for the entire nation, the National Cultural Center. And it has really lived up to that promise over the last nearly 50 years, becoming one of the great performing arts centers, if not the best performing arts center in the entire world. It has been an important addition to the city of Washington, which before the Kennedy Center maybe didn't have as much cultural life as maybe it should have as the nation's capital. So it was a great addition, but there were some challenges that we tried over the last nearly 50 years to overcome. One of them was it wasn't as physically connected to the city as some people would have liked. It didn't engage with the community as some people would have preferred. And it didn't really involve young people in quite the way that we would think that it should be done at a, at a performance center. So a few years ago, we decided that we would try to do some of the things that the Kennedy Center should have been able to do from the beginning, which is to connect more with the community, involve the community more, engage people, have them come here during the day, spend the entire day here, learn about the performing arts, have people get arts education here, spend the day here, listen to concerts on the outside, watch what's going on in the inside from the outside, the kind of thing other places around the world have begun to do, but nobody's been able to do it in quite the way that we wanted to do it. So with the help of many people, we've been able to pull this off. And I want to thank a number of people who made this possible. We did this with philanthropy, so we didn't go to the U.S. government and ask for its assistance. Uh, whether we would have gotten it or not, I don't know, but I think the U.S. government certainly has been very helpful to us over the years. But we raised $250 million to put this together. Many of you who have contributed your money to this, make this possible here, thank you very much. Many of you have contributed your time, your energy, your ideas to make this possible, thank you very much. All of you have given a gift to the nation, and all of you have given a gift to the performing artists who will perform here over the years, and all of you have given a gift to the students who will come here, the young children who will learn about arts here, and all of you have given a gift to make the Kennedy Center the finest performing arts center in the world, and all of you I regard as cultural patriots, and I want to thank you on behalf of our country and on behalf of the Kennedy Center for everything you have done to make this possible. So. All of you who have who have made this possible should feel much better about what you've done because you've now made something possible that didn't really exist before. You've made something possible that is a great addition to this community. And I want to thank the mayor who will speak uh, shortly and also want to thank all the people in the local community who have made it possible to dedicate this today. And I want to thank the all possible for the weather uh, to be here today. Um, What we hope to do over the next number of years is engage the community in Washington in ways that have never been engaged before with the Kennedy Center and also to make certain that not only people from the Washington area, including Maryland and Virginia and the District of Columbia, but people from all around the country and all around the world will feel that this is a place that they can come and learn more about the arts, participate in the arts, feel that this is their place and really be in a terrific addition to the Kennedy Center. So as we get ready in two years to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy Center, I hope everybody will recognize that we've now brought in addition to the Kennedy Center that is truly an addition that makes us the finest performing arts center in the world without any question. Now, as President Kennedy famously said, victory has a hundred fathers and defeat is an orphan. And there are more than a hundred fathers and mothers who are participating in making this possible. And I won't go through all of them right now, but the contractors from Whiting Turner, uh, the, the uh, people from the Kennedy Center staff, the volunteers, all made this come together on time. And uh, the person, though, who's most responsible for making this come together on time and making everything work is the president of the Kennedy Center, who's done an extraordinary job in the five years she's been here, Deborah Rutter. And it's my honor to ask Deborah Rutter if she would come up here now.
Good morning. I am absolutely ecstatic to welcome you here this morning. And for these 16 days of celebration, central to our plan for this was to share all aspects of the arts and to welcome all who want to participate either by performing, by experimenting, by sharing, by witnessing. And today has been put together in a very purposeful way with lots of ceremony, both private and public, including our drum line that brought us all into the space and really got us started. But first, I want to tell you about something very special that happened just this morning at 8.30. In this space, we had a circle where we recognized the land and we had uh, a number of individuals who helped us in the most formal way to recognize the first peoples who are on this land. I hope you'll return to us. Thank you. We will do more of that on Tuesday when we have our special day for indigenous peoples. But this morning, we were led by Rose Puhatan, Kiros Ald, and Courtney Yellowfat, who brought a number of young artists and performers who are members of the Standing Rock Reservation, who helped us in a very private and very spiritual way to call on the elements and the, 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 that which means so much to us about the earth, the sky, the land, our people, the human race, to really recognize these spaces and really launch this in the most beautiful way. And I want to ask you to join me in saying thank you for that special moment, for those individuals who are here. So um, as many of you know, because I think you're all family and certainly all receive our emails. Thank you for doing that. You know, just, President Kenny is really central to all that we do and think about and, and the way in which we purposefully plan. His legacy, his ideals are absolutely embedded in all of our work. And um, I have to tell you that to have a chairman like David Rubenstein who is a walking embodiment of those ideals. I'd like to ask you to say thank you to David. He never wants me to ask him to do that, but you know that we need to in this moment. Um, we all know him for the, his language around the moonshot, and I will tell you that this expansion, the reach, is our collective moonshot. And I want to invite all of you to participate in that way, to think of this as your space for experiencing, celebrating, and really reaching for the moon in your own personal way. This is our moonshot. So we uh, have gathered here in this moment. You're about to have a truly extraordinary experience where we actually re-declare our independence and our creative independence. Um, and you will have a, a very special moment for that. I want to say thank you to David Rubenstein by actually gracing our welcome lobby with a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And if you have not been in there, I want you to make sure to go in there. David, thank you so much. If you will give me just one moment, David is right, there are thousands of people whether it is the construction team and the, all the subcontractors from Whiting Turner, our architects and designers from Stephen Hull Associates, our campaign cabinet chaired by Michael Nydorf, and his generosity with his wife Noemi and the Centene Charitable Foundation, who helped be really central to this, the Boeing Company, who actually helped with the first campaign 50 years ago and helped so enormously with this campaign. Fred Eichner, who was a board member, who was the, um, the, the, the chair of the Architect Selection Committee and one of our most important contributors together with Jackie Badger-Mars and Stephen and Christine Schwartzman, another former chairman. I want to also say thank you to Wells Fargo, our well opening festival sponsor. Um, the red right there will remind us, but we're really grateful for their support to make this festival possible. So in addition, along the way, and you all know it, you're, you're you know, Washingtonians, you know that nothing gets done really easily around here, 
but we had lots and lots and lots of uh, local uh, institutions that helped us, including closing the roads for us to, for our parade this morning. Um, I want to say thank you to the National Capital Planning Commission and their leadership to the Commission of Fine Arts and their leadership for helping us make this a real reality. Um, I am thrilled to um, introduce just briefly now our mayor who has been enthusiastic about the arts, who has been very passionate about making DC a livable, beautiful place known not just for being the power center that it is, but for the cultural center that it is. So please join me in welcoming to the stage our Mayor Bowser. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am very excited to be here to bring greetings on behalf. Some call it local Washington. I call it the real Washington. All 700,000 of us who call Washington, D.C. home. Uh, and we are thrilled uh, to celebrate with the K Kennedy Center, with you, Deborah, and the entire staff at the Kennedy Center, with you, David, and the entire board of directors, and congratulate you on bringing this wonderful new facility uh, to Washington, D.C. I speak to you on behalf of our residents, the Council of the District of Columbia, and I'm, I'm pleased to recognize Council Member Evans, uh, who is here to celebrate with us. Uh, we love and cherish uh, the arts and creatives in Washington, D.C. Uh, we're lucky to have such a national institution also embrace its local community. Uh, we know, and David's right, maybe 50 years ago, Washington, D.C. wasn't a cultural hub, but I'm here to tell you that it is now. Uh, we have a diverse international community. Uh, and we have creative professionals who are coming to Washington, D.C. to grow in their art, uh, but also to make art their business and their livelihood. The arts account for 8% of Washington, D.C.'s local economy, and we celebrate that each year in the month of September through, during 202 Creates. As I approached uh, this area to speak today, I saw your vision come to life in connecting the center with the Potomac River, with people who are celebrating uh, the beauty of our natural surroundings and the beauty of the art that is created here. My administration is very focused um, and will work with you hand in hand on how the Kennedy Center and the REACH Center touches all eight wards of Washington, D.C. So we look forward to our Office of Creative Affairs um, working uh, with the Board of Directors, working with cultural institutions around the District of Columbia uh, to take our engagement with the arts uh, even further. So you have my congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. It really means so much to have you here. So now we actually bring you into the beginning, um, the official mom artistic moment. And I am so honored and thrilled to introduce you to a member of the family who's been with us just uh, nine months now. Um, he has really created this redeclaration of creative independence. Um, Mark Bamuti Joseph joined us, as I said, as our new Vice President and Artistic Director of Social uh, Impact. And he has created this work, he has woven the text together for this historic moment. I think as you listen to these words, you will recognize them from fellow citizen artists, some of them so familiar. And he has also used the words of President Kennedy to help us really think about what it means to be independent, to be creative, and what it means as artists to bring this to life. So as we celebrate the living memorial to John F. Kennedy, please welcome our creatives for this redeclaration.
Good morning. What's cracking? Uh, these are my very good friends. This is Daniel Bernard Romaine. This is Rachel Martin from NPR. This is my friend Tatiana Chavez. This is the great Alfre Woodard. This is David Brooks. Declaration of creative independence, a remix of Kennedy's first public words as president on the occasion of an inaugural moment, some self-evident truths and some personal views expressed with an intent to invite and connect, a shout out to Toni Morrison, an apple cart, noticeably not upset and yet filled with some unusual fruit filled with something brand new we can all taste filled with seeds of something we all must grow this morning we declare it an assertion of the citizen as artist and the artist as leader a bet that you probably cannot recite the bill of rights but you know all the words to stairway to heaven you've heard the soundtrack so many times you could probably understudy for lin-manuel Ma miranda at this point Artists are our avatars. It's a self-evident truth. This is a redeclaration of it. Joy is a human right. Inspiration is an American ideal. In order to achieve the beautiful democracy, we must have a democracy of beautiful things. Dances and symphonic sound and New Orleans and Houston and Detroit and Bali and Budapest and Bangladesh and the Bronx. Creativity knows no boundaries. Art knows no national borders. Genius can speak in any tongue and the entire world will hear it and listen. This is America. We preserve and remix it all. We declare that art is a basic truth. We ourselves are evidence. We are at our best when creativity is right within our reach. <laughs> Vice President Johnson, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chief Justice, President Eisenhower, Vice President Nixon, President Truman, revered clergy, fellow citizens, we observe today not a victory of a party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God the same solemn oath our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. The world is very different now, for man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. And yet the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. We dare not forget today that we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike, that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans, born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed, and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us ill or well, that we shall pay any price 
bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend and oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. The name of the building is not Stay. It is not called The Sit or The Kick Back and Watch. It is called The Reach. And we must do it, like our namesake. Our namesake says, I see little of more importance to the future of our country and our civilization than the full recognition of the place of the artist. He was a leader who embraced creativity. Bearing his name is an honor. We are responsible to the aspiration of that name, to be restless for peace, to be eloquent while stargazing, moving forward, honoring our foundational colors, red rice, cotton, and indigo, the economy of creative ecologies. Who am I, American, if not free to create, to manifest my destiny? What algorithm and yeast and response and responsibility the ability to respond simultaneously to the world as it is by making a physical time-based archetype of a different world as I imagine it. Past passes through the artist. Tradition is just an old innovation waiting to become new again. Beethoven probably had more in common with Sid Vicious than he did with the King of Austria. And frankly, Few of us remember who the King of Austria was in 18 whatever, but you remember the music he commissioned because great art matters. Shouldn't have to be anything we repeat, but alas, it is up to us on this day to redeclare it. To those old allies whose cultural and spiritual origins we share, we pledge the loyalty of faithful friends. United, there is little we cannot do in a host of cooperative ventures. Divided, there is little we can do, for we dare not meet a powerful challenge at odds and split asunder. To those new states whom we welcome to the ranks of the free, we pledge our word that one form of colonial control shall not have passed away merely to be replaced by a far more iron tyranny. We shall not always expect to find them supporting our view, but we shall always hope to find them strongly supporting their own freedom. And to remember that in the past, those who actually sought power by riding the back of the tiger ended up inside. From sea to sea, from river to run, slopes and sun, blue men dancing, reach with an extended wingspan, sprawling like the width between Esperanza Spaulding's soprano and her upright's vibrato, reach upright like a straight-backed woman, balancing tomorrow upon her crown. Reach for the jewel of American promise, downward into the bottomless echo of an ocean who swallowed dreamers against the current. The despondent Africans who died in bondage before setting foot on the North American continent. Acknowledge our many truths, make our wrongs right. Float towards the ideals of creativity and independence like the building. You see how it rises and falls like a serene white hawk or the heart rate of a young boy in love. How the building curves, 
like a lunar satellite around Venus, curves like the river that bends around it. The building is in a cosmos of water and tree, cloud white, peaceful green, sky so blue lit you feel like you can reach it. It is fair. Like Thurgood Marshall, it speaks of justice for all. It begs of you your curiosity, peeking all the corners for unscripted magic, concurrently cracking in every corner, completely transparent like the ideals of American law. Making art is complex. Constructing a building is like impossible. So we made three of them. The building reaches to the skylight. It expands its wings and welcomes you into its chest if you choose to come close. It descends into the river below, eye level to the water. It makes you look at yourself in the context of creative process at eye level. The reach isn't just what you can see, it's about who you choose to be in the midst of creative potency. It's about our collective creative potency. It's about art as vessel for huge ideas, great education, and social responsibility. Ooh. Let both sides seek to invoke the wonders of science instead of its terrors. Together, let us explore the stars, conquer the deserts, eradicate disease, touch the ocean depths, and encourage the arts and commerce. Let both sides unite to heed the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. And if a beachhead of cooperation may push back the, the jungle of suspicion, let both sides join in creating a new endeavor, not a new balance of power, but a new world of law where the strong are just and the weak secure and the peace preserved all this will not happen in the first 100 days nor will it happen in the first 1000 days nor will it happen in the lifetime of this administration nor even perhaps in our lifetime in this planet but let us begin okay. the poet says we choose to go to the moon as if dreaming were a choice Far from being a harbor where culture comes to dock, the reach seeks to be a space station where ideas are launched. In defiance of the gravity of this moment, what is the contemporary equivalent of Kennedy's moonshot? How can culture move us toward the impossible? We have the opportunity to operate a content center within the psychic center of global cool, just beyond the grasp of time, counter to the clock, the hope of a little girl at the ballet, an old woman whose heart is a flag waving, do more than perform community, activate its creative intelligence, weaponize love hands to the sky, holding up its weight, dancing with the stars, scurrilous, spurious, clandestine, impervious, a parasol with a red hot handle, a handle hymn, mosaic of new millennium thought, magic hour landmine, the midnight maraud, this land, chrome and green, like Virginia leaves with blood at their root, water flow in fall, freedom ain't free and neither is this building, the 
price of admission is your active imagination. Hold this truth. Marvel at the marble, at the marley, and the skylight. But if all you do is look, you really ain't doing it right. No shade. This is a building made for movement. Its matter is the matter of sweat. This thing is rock solid, but it flows like fluid. Its name is a verb, yo. It's time for some action. The curtain is up. The potential for sparkling chicanery is high. Let's act up. The future will not happen to us. To fulfill the greatness of American promise, we make it together artfully. In your hands, my fellow Americans, more than mine will rest the final success or failure of our course. Since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. The graves of young Americans who answered the call to service surround the globe. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need, not as a call to battle, though embattled we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle, year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its most dangerous hour. I do not shirk from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. My family, this is Daniel Bernard Romain on violin right here. It's my very good friend, this is the best-selling author. This is David Brooks right here. This is Rachel Martin. This is the incredible Tatiana Chavez. It's one of my personal heroes. This is Alfre Woodard. Yes. My name is Mark Bamuti Joseph. Welcome all to the reach. Everybody, good morning. My name is Renee Fleming. I am so inspired. Oh, what a gorgeous day and what an extraordinary place this is. I, I, I can only say that there are no boundaries. There are no boundaries on this land. There are no boundaries between the land and the water. There are no boundaries between the land and the sky. And there are certainly no boundaries downstairs and inside. The fluidity of these spaces invites all of us, audience, artists, community, to share. And this is what I've been dreaming of in all of my years as an artist, as I've stand on one proscenium stage after another, not to knock them, we need them, they're wonderful, but this is absolutely what we need right now. And I think we need to commemorate this space in one more way. We need to all reach. Everybody reach, reach. And now you're gonna sing with me, okay? We're gonna say reach, and then I want you all to sing as high as you can. Bernard, would you give us a little bit of a, uh, some sort of a tremolo and background? We're gonna do this a couple of times because I know you have high notes. I know you can reach to the sky. Re and 
again, much, much, much higher, all the way up to the sky. Re and the third time, one last time. Here we go. Re and we're going to do that a lot in the coming years. We're going to share. I'm going to make you all perform on a regular basis, and you're going to love it. And I'm going to love it too. We all have to. We have to extend ourselves, don't you think? And share. Um, I want to. I want to talk about uh, the spirit of John F. Kennedy because this place uh, also invokes him, invokes his words, and invokes his uh, appreciation for culture and for the arts that we love so much and really you know the word art uh, is not elitist it's really it means simply the best of what we can achieve and put together as creative humans uh, and this will exemplify that and we're gonna we're, we're um, uh, gonna thank a very special person right now and bring her back on stage because this is not one space this is nine spaces and outdoors and the way it fits into the community, the way it fits into the landscape, this was all managed to an exemplary uh, uh, degree by our hero, Deborah Rudder. And I want to applaud her one more time because she has earned it. And she does this day in and day out with unfailing good humor, talent, and brilliance. Uh, thank you so much and enjoy these spaces. I hope to see you here, all of you, often. Deborah Rudder, thank you. No more words, it's all about the art. Thank you for being the heart of this institution. Thank you for your belief in the arts. I want to say thank you to Mark Bamuti Joseph for the inspiration and reminding us why we think about this. So we are officially open. Let's go and have fun.